Have you ever had a Border Collie, or any dog really, with a behavior problem that was just not easy to fix? Did you work hard to fix it, but some of the methods that you were shown just really didn't work that well? Have others ever accused you of not training your dog when you know that you've turned yourself inside out trying to work out problems? Or maybe you feel completely alone because of how people judge you based on your dog's behavior. Well, you aren't alone. So let's talk about this. If you'd like to make life better for you and your dog, the Border Collies and I would love you to join us. Yay, good job. Training any dog has its challenges, but let's face it, some dogs have special challenges. Every dog is special and unique, no matter what their background, training, health, or experiences. But when a dog shows a behavior that doesn't fit with our human ideas of how dog behavior should be, people often make all sorts of judgments about either the dog or the owner. We often make assumptions that a dog who behaves in ways that we don't like was mistreated, or the owner is not showing enough leadership, or maybe has bad energy, or has neglected the dog, or even done something terrible to the dog. Some of this can sound reasonable or possible, but as an owner trainer who has made huge daily efforts to fix a behavior, hearing someone criticize and blame you is like saying you are the problem and there is nothing you can do to fix it. I've worked for many years with dogs as my main focus. I was employed for several years in the parks with my border collies doing Canada Goose Control. I worked at St. John Ambulance as a pet therapy coordinator. I've helped with a variety of dog classes from agility to freestyle to scenting. I even taught my dogs how to paint. My dogs have played characters in award-winning short films. But I too have had challenging dogs and have felt completely misunderstood, regardless of the training I've done, the efforts I've made, or the achievements my dogs have had with film and with goose control. I've heard all the criticisms about needing to be more dominant or forceful, or just, your dog shouldn't act like that. <laughs> really, that's so helpful. When I used a training method called counter conditioning, I was told by a non-dog owner incidentally that I was training my dog to be aggressive. I had people say that I wasn't exercising or training my dog enough, even though my dogs were working dogs doing full-time goose control from dawn to dusk, and I would spend a couple of hours each day doing training. People unfortunately make quick judgments without actually knowing a situation at all. And those quick judgments, in my experience, are rarely helpful. They're usually just hurtful and unproductive, actually counterproductive. Sometimes we might have an idea why a dog is a certain way, and sometimes we have no idea. You get a dog from an unknown background, and sometimes you don't even know where the issue started. Or you have a dog with a health problem, or with less than ideal genetics that make the dog prone to behaviors that aren't appropriate in our human world. And there are other factors that we might not even know about. Sometimes people who work very hard to train a particular dog don't get the results they're wanting because they just haven't found a way that works for them and their unique dog. And honestly, I'm going to say that people who find themselves in these situations are generally some of the most dedicated and caring dog owners. Because really, if you aren't dedicated or don't care, you would just rehome the dog or euthanize, wouldn't you? But maybe it's nothing to do with the owner or the dog. Maybe sometimes we have to be creative and find new ways to work on behavior that really help our dogs. Maybe some of the older methods of training haven't been the best methods for our particular dogs. And maybe there are even new ways of training that we haven't even yet discovered. Every dog and every owner has a story. And before we judge, maybe it's time we stop blaming and find new ways of training. I've had different challenges with each of my dogs. I've had some easy dogs and some not so easy dogs. I've had dogs with epilepsy. I had a dog who resource guarded. I've had anxious dogs. 
Asha, my border collie who has just turned 14, lived in a barn for the first 10 months of her life and had very little exposure to anything else. So she found the world very terrifying. Keegan had an undiagnosed tooth infection during months of his young puppy life and so did not and still doesn't like other dogs in his face, which makes sense, doesn't it? If you have sore teeth, he had tooth surgery at four months old. Later, he almost drowned because I found out that he had epilepsy. Keegan is a dog that will never enjoy new dogs in his bubble, but that isn't because of abuse or a lack of alpha rolling or just not training him. But unless a strange dog comes right into his face, most people would never see this issue. I've had some dogs that are diamonds in the rough, but I've always worked hard to find ways to manage and make life better for my dogs. With Keegan, I worked so hard to train him, harder than I had worked with any dog. I look back now and I know that actually too many hours training wasn't necessarily the best approach, but I was determined to fix him. And so every night I would go to a popular walkway and I would expose him to sounds and children and other dogs and I would reward him for hand touches and focusing on me. In the end, it did work, but I also realized that if I did this too often, not only did he not progress as quickly, but I too would get frustrated with the process. So we needed breaks from this in between. Skeen is my newest young dog, and he too has started off with a less than ideal situation. He was malnourished as a young pup, and he ended up at the Victoria Humane Society where I was able to fortunately adopt him. He had a funny walk as a young dog and it turned out that he had grade four luxating patella, which basically means that his kneecap was totally out of place and that he would need knee surgery to avoid deformity. So instead of doing puppy classes and having fun puppy training, his puppy life was centered around recovering from surgery a lot of time in the crate and stroller and doing everything for his physical healing that I could do. But a very restricted puppy life led to a lot of frustration for him. Skeen is definitely a diamond in the rough. He gets amped up around new dogs. He's excited by sounds, by birds, squirrels, and there are many where I live. He finds it hard to focus at times and generally finds a lot of things in life quite scary. My training with Skeen is going to be different than with any other dog I've had because he is his own self and has a unique set of challenges. I want to share some of my training journey with Skeen with you because he is what some people would consider a difficult dog. But I also believe that his difficulties can be overcome. And I have no doubt that whatever I accomplish with Skeen can also be your accomplishment with your own dogs. I think it's time to stop shaming people who don't have the perfect Disney dog that everyone would like. Our dogs are just dogs coping with life in the ways that they know and sometimes having their own physical issues or their own genetic makeup or breed characteristics. What we see as a problem to them is just the way they know to cope with life. But they can learn new ways of coping and we can learn new ways of training. And let me just say that I am so proud of you if you are sticking it out with your dog and really trying to make things better. Because those who shame you not only don't understand the dedication and effort you've put into your dog, but also some of those same people would not put in those efforts themselves. Many would rehome the dog or even euthanize. Now I'm not going to judge those choices either because each case is individual and there are always extreme cases where a dog isn't in a fitting home or where euthanasia really is the only safe or humane option. But instead of focusing on blaming and shaming, be proud of the fact that your dog is special, a diamond in the rough. And so are you for taking on this opportunity to learn new ways of training and creating an amazing new relationship. Yeah. I'll be posting some training tips and updates as I work with my special Diamond in the Rough pup Skeen. And I hope that we can progress in our training together. I'll post my next video right about here. And I'd also love to know more about your journey with your own dog. So please feel free to share your story in the comments below. Happy training 
and I will see you in the next video.